Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and uh, today we're going to work on a Mitchell Copperhead. It's a rear drive reel. This one's got four ball bearings in it. It's got an interesting little uh, spool up here, so we'll show you a little bit about that. It's a uh, long cast. It's got a narrow spool. doesn't handle a lot of line. There's a rear drag assembly. This rear drag is holding. So uh, we don't need to necessarily do anything with it in a tune-up. I'll take it off. I'll show you what it is all about anyway. Uh, so with this, uh, this spool, it's got an interesting uh, lock spool. It's called a, uh, well, that's what it's called, lock spool. And uh, if you tighten down on your drag and you turn to the left, you'll see that the spool is interchangeable. It's got a little carrier underneath here. So we'll start by taking that off. And then we're going to want to take the carrier itself off, which has got a screw on it. And then we can take that shield off. The idea being we got to get to the got to get to the um, rotor. Make sure we, we do the servicing under there. Then it's got a pin and then we've got a lot of stuff going underneath here. So I'm just checking the case. We're okay. When, when you have a handle that turns the screw on the other side, it means that it has a shaft that goes all the way through. So to remove that shaft, you want to unscrew the screw here. And then you can remove the handle. And I like to, to put this on. Now, there's something I don't like there. I hope that's just a black handle, but you'll see that there's a lot of Dirt. Maybe that's just a black handle, or maybe that's got something going on inside. The reel itself was turning smooth. I'll just, uh, I'm going to err to the, it's a black handle. Okay, next up then we're going to take the side plate off. And I'm going to take the drag cover off because a lot of times the side plate hides underneath there. I don't think that's the case with this, but let's go ahead and take that off anyway. This one is held on, the cap is held on by a nut below then you can generally walk it off. Just back it off as if you were adjusting the drag. And that should bring the carrier out. Now we have a little pin concept in here, so we'll go back to that. I just, for now, I just wanted to get that to clear the uh, case, and it looks like it would have cleared the case regardless. Okay, there's four case screws then. You'll notice a couple of things as I'm working on this. I have a protective glove on my non-dominant hand, my left hand. I do that so that when greases are out there, uh, I can avoid them if possible. And a lot of these reels, as many of you have seen in some of my other videos, get a little bit uh, over-greased and nasty and dirty and the like. So if I can keep that off my hands, uh, to me that's a good thing. So I always wear the little latex glove. And I use a parch tray. That's the bottom of a milk jug right in front of the reel here and I do that so that when I go to reinstall I know where the, the pieces and parts are for this reel. So we're going to take this reel apart completely I'll show you how to service it. I'll show you what it's made of if you were thinking about possibly uh, going out and getting one of these or if you find one in a tag sale or <clears throat> flea market or something you'll know what, what makes it go underneath. This is a little bit different on a rear drag reel because a lot of the rear drag reels today are set up with the fast cast option uh, and this one's kind of straight up. You'll also notice I, uh, I put the screws on the bench before putting these into the tray. I like to make sure when I take side plate screws out that they're all the same size and if there's a small or a longer one I like to note where that came from. In this case they were all the same size. We should be able to get the case off now. Just using a little razor knife here to, to separate the case. And as it turns out, I've got to take the, the top off now. We have a little pin in here. It's a push pin. Let's see if I can do this without pulling that pin out. It's a curled pin like you would find in a firearm or other things. Uh, in this case, I think I can work around that. And then you should be able to remove the shaft from below. Right now I just uh, want to get this up enough that I can pull the side plate off. And then you'll see here there's a little screw and a, uh, 
and a little clip that's holding your your shaft in so we'll go ahead and take that off so these reels are popular there's uh, the nice thing about a, a rear drag is if you're fighting a fish you don't have to reach over your spool and your line to make the adjustment you can simply make the adjustment from below and that's a, that's one of the popular reasons for having the rear drag reel you don't see too many large saltwater reels with the rear drag just because to get maximum drag you need a lot of space and uh, in the case of uh, freshwater reels you don't need the max drag that you need in saltwater reels and saltwater reels you would need to really have a big bottom on this in order for it to uh, to work properly okay so we've got a couple of pieces on deck here I noticed this little thing came out of the cross line block that's fine we have our assembly for the cross line shaft we have a ball bearing on this side and there's going to be a ball bearing in a case here that's two of the four ball bearings we'll take care of servicing those in just a moment and right now we're just going to lift up on the rotor I still have those attachments in there we have a little eccentric kind of an anti-reverse and I'm just taking that off so that I can get to the bearing here now, if that bearing was talking to me or squeaking or any kind of kind of noisy sort of stuff, then I would want to remove these two screws here, take the pinion shaft and the bearing out. But this is a clean assembly. The bearing's working fine. All I did was remove the collars so that I could get a squirt of oil in there. I use a fishing reel oil. In this case, I'm using Reelex. Uh, I always tell folks that... Uh, if and when you're doing the servicing on a reel, make sure that you're using a reel oil that's designed for fishing reels. There's no sense in um, doing anything but. All right, I want to put a little bit of grease on the bottom here. That shaft is clean, so I don't need to, to do anything there. This reel was uh, uh, clean when I got it. I got it in a flea market. I got it attached to a pole. and. Um, I, I intend to resell this, so what I like to do is make sure that um, that they're serviced before I go to resell. I don't trust where reels have been, regardless of what the vendor tells me at a flea market. So, it, in my case, it just pays me to to do that. I'm just checking to make sure that that anti-reverse dog override uh, is working, and it is. Alrighty, let's just. Uh, Go back and forth. Like I said, these are not terribly complicated reels here. We're going to take the cross wind block. There's a little bit of a, a stud here, so we're going to make sure we get grease on that stud and a little bit on the flat surfaces. And then we can put that back in. And actually, before I do that, I want to pull the bearing off of the, the gear side here. We'll just clean that up a little bit. I have the bearing. I also have the little fork for the spool screw there, so I'm going to take that off too. And just remove the excess grease on that bearing. I'm going to put that right back in the hole there, in the side case. And if you do it that way, it's a little bit easier than trying to work it around this because there's a flat uh, flange on the back end of this cross wind and what happens if you are not careful with that is that the um, sorry two things at once I'm <laughs> just trying to make the stud work uh, what will happen if you don't do that on the uh, cross wind is sometimes you'll get caught up on the lip here okay I'm going to take that stud place it towards the bottom as we got to install that cross wind gear and you want it on the bottom, that way you can be able to attach that shaft. We did the top side, we just want to check underneath, make sure it's clean. We can put a drop of oil on the click mechanism here. We can also make sure that that's coming out. And if you hit it, well, I don't have the hand strength, it'll, uh, it should work. We're also going to put a little bit of oil on both sides of the, the bail arm, and we'll put a little bit of oil onto the line roller, and then we can reinstall this. We want to line up the flat side. There's 
two washers to run underneath here to pull on on that. Okay, we have that nut. So what I was successfully able to do here was to take the axle shaft off that has that hold pin without removing the roll, the roll pin there. Uh, just makes life a little bit easier. If you uh, if you wanted to, you could have pulled the pin. And like I said, in the case of a servicing where there's nothing, oops. See, I'm getting ahead of myself again. There you go. I'm going to grab that shaft. I got to grab the main gear. There's a lip on this side plate and that's the ramp that's going to trip the, the bell carrier and so you've got to install the bottom before you finish that rotor case off. Okay, I'm just getting the dirty grease off of this reel. I'll go ahead and put fresh grease on. I'm checking the teeth as I'm doing this on this main gear and on the back drive where the cross wind. I want to make sure that those are good. We already greased up the the other two components so we can install the main gear then. You can give it a turn if you like. Everything's working fine. Just make sure that the stud winds up down below again. Next up then we want to insert the shaft. And again, I'm trying to do this with it. Uh, this, I don't want to say shortcut, but I want to try and do this with the, the um, axle shaft and rotor on. If I have to pull that, rotor, that pin, I will. Alright, you have that. You want to line up the cross wind block then. Come down. Then there's two slots here that you need to make sure that these clips engage with. It's engaging, but I had it backwards. There you go. That's the way that the clip goes on. I'll go ahead and grab the set screw for that. I'm going to put a little grease on the end of my screwdriver here so that it'll hold that to enable me to get a start. Okay, now I said I would come back here and just show you how this works with this um, clip here. So there's two bumps underneath here. You want to grab a pick or something so you can work on the one bump here. And you want to push that Get that. I'm uh, just working on that clip at the moment. That's your clip that holds your drag stack in, and you can pull your drag stack, and then the components will come out. And you just want to note the order of these as you take them out. So there you go. That's your, your drag stack. You have the top washer, you have the carrier, you have plastic washers in this one that load up. So plastic, plastic, you don't have to do anything with plastic. It's going to be plastic again. It's going to be the other drag washer with the key on it. 
pull it out, it's going to fit inside the slot here, just like that. Spring goes on, carrier goes on, and then you should be able to reinstall the spring. Just want to get one side into the hole. Pressing down gets the other side in. Now you're locked on with that. And uh, we've lost the hold the clamp for the top. When I did that, that's what you heard coming off. So I'm just going to come over here now. We've got this all set up. Just going to put a little bit of grease on this. We're going to come back in and we'll put the side cap on here. when you try and take shortcuts. There we go. Get the side plate on. Now I can come down with this. All, all because I didn't want to take the little rolled pin out. And as I'm looking, I have a bearing on my table here which belongs in the side plate. So let's just take this off anyway. bearing that belongs there, so let's put that back in. Let's give that a shot of oil. Let's try this again. I think that's better. Let's put this back on. Get that started. And you may be wondering why I've trying to leave that alone. I just With roll pins, sometimes they've got a flared end on them, and if you, uh, if you start pushing the wrong way, you can bend the axle. So in this case, I figured if I can leave it in there, I don't risk bending the axle and having something go awry. Here are the four side plate screws. We knew that they were all the same, so uh, it doesn't matter which one you put them in. And what I like to do in tightening these down is to go in a north, south, east, west pattern. That enables me to keep equal pressure on the different sides of the side plates so that I don't risk it warping. And a lot of times uh, folks will ask about the mechanical screwdrivers. And I make it a point on reels like this that have a plastic case to, uh, to mention that I don't like those high torque screwdrivers on uh, these types of reels because you risk fracturing the, the case. But uh, if you need that, uh, as I've said in the past, you can use it. Just uh, don't drive it all the way home. All right, we're going to bring this up. The screw on the bottom here. I'm going to go look on my floor here for the other piece for the tie down for the nut, and then we'll just reinstall and give it a test. Now, can't, can't go too far. A lot of folks actually ask me what I have below me. I have an office uh, kind of roller thing. It's a plastic uh, sheet where you would typically put an office chair that rolls. And uh, what I, I like about that is that the if something falls, it doesn't go far. All right, so we've got that back on. We're going to flip the tie down on now. I'm going to give that a spin just to make sure it's spinning right. Oh, that works nice. Just have to align the hole now. I know there it is. I knew I had my tie down screw here somewhere. Guess that came out when I pulled the handle out there. Okay. Next up 
then is our shield. And we tie that down with the screw on top. That one actually has a wider slot there. So the nature on this one is a quick change spool. If you have more of these then all you do is simply turn to the right to lock it in. One more thing then is just our our handle here. Some of the tools off the deck here. this a test, make sure that it's working the way it should. Okay, there we go. That's your Mitchell Copperhead. Nice little reel. It's, uh, oops, we don't have enough of the handle. Nice smooth reel. It says uh, four ball bearings and uh, I'm sure this is going to fish for a long time to come. So. With that, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you subscribe if you do, if you want to see more. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.